This is the Pythonic Accountant, and today I'm going to go over one of my older videos content. I'm going to refresh it because I have to update a couple of issues that have come up based on some changes that have been made. And what we're going to show here is how when you use uh, some of the libraries to scrape websites, if you're using just requests or just pulling, uh, try to pull stuff directly through Pandas data frames, um, some web pages, if they don't render um, the or if they do render uh, using JavaScript some of the data, it won't show up in the HTML when you try to pull it directly into requests or pandas. What does that mean? <laughs> Let me show you. So first, um, I've already run these, but we can run them again. So import pandas, and then I'm going to basically create uh, colors pointing to this web page, which has a table that is already in the HTML. So what that means is I can directly pull the data from this table without having to do any sort of causing the page to render it. And that means that I can go directly into um, you know, grabbing a data frame for it. And I have access to all that data uh, without having to do any sort of rendering of the page. So super quick, right there, accessible in data frame. What it means when I have to render it first is if I go to this page, which is this uh, oils website, this has cereals and oil seeds markets. These tables here, they show up on the page. I can highlight them, copy and paste them, but these do not show up to requests or pandas when I try to access them directly from the website. And what will happen is if I try to do this pandas, you know, read HTML oils, it's going to error out because it says it didn't find any tables, even though we know that's not true. So what we've done here is we're installing Selenium and Beautiful Soup. Selenium is a web driver that will actually drive a web page to go and navigate somewhere, render it, and then we can access the HTML after it's been rendered. And BS4 is Beautiful Soup. Um, and so here I'm just updating the underlying um, available programs or available uh, uh, applications that I can update. And then here I'm installing the Chrome driver, which is the actual driver under Selenium. And next, what we're actually doing is importing the libraries I need, setting some options. Uh, headless is really important to use. I think these are required as well. The headless means that it's not going to try to open up its own web page. And since I'm running this on Google Colab, I wouldn't be able to see a web page pop up anyways. Uh, but what I am able to do is using the headless mode, it'll actually you know, mimic what it would be like to open up a web page. And when I point at that same website, this web driver is now available for, uh, let's see, I think it's having a problem. Oh yeah, so this is the problem that I ran before. So um, I actually have to just delete this first variable here and now it should work. So it's creating this web driver, um, you know, variable and then I can point the web driver to get the web page grabbing the HTML, and now I can point my pandas read HTML to this rendered HTML. And I have available uh, this table, which represents the uh, UK feed wheat. So May 24th, 190.45. You can see May 24th, 190.45. Pretty cool. And I can access the uh, next table as well, the Paris Euro next milling, and that's the September 24th, 258. And there it is, September 24th, 258. So there you have it. I'm going to leave the URL for this in the notes in case you're interested in going and checking it out yourself. And you should be able to leverage this code in your own Google Colab notebook to point to any page that you need to render. Thanks. We'll see you at the next one.